Be honest. Think back to the last time you made a mistake and thought to yourself, you idiot. Question for you. If your best friend made the same mistake, would you call her an idiot? Bet your answer is no. So why would you say that to yourself? Hi, I'm Laura Richer, owner of Seattle Healing Hypnotherapy Reiki and Life Coaching and host of On The Verge Radio. This is just one example of many where we put ourselves down, hold ourselves back, and limit ourselves from being the amazing people that we are. In my program, How to Build a Seven-Figure Self-Worth, I teach you how to let go of your limiting and self-sabotaging beliefs, enabling you to truly be your best self. You deserve it. Find out more at richerselfworth.com. And good morning and welcome to On The Verge Radio, broadcasting here on Transformation Talk Radio. I am so happy to introduce our host, Laura Richer. Good, good morning. Mor- good morning, Andy. And I am your co-host, Andy Lucas. I have a quote here from Oscar Wilde. To love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. Yes, it is. And today we're talking about healthy <laughs> self-esteem and how you build a seven-figure self-worth. Laura, what is a seven-figure <laughs> self-worth? <laughs> so a seven-figure net worth means you have a million bucks. Nice. A seven-figure self-worth means you feel like a million bucks. Ooh, and I do love to feel like a million bucks. Me too. And that is a topic that comes up all the time in my practice with my clients is how do we get a healthy self-esteem? And why is that even important? Yeah, why is it important? Well, the self is, your self-esteem is important to being a thriving, successful individual. You have to believe you're worth it in order to manifest the things in you in your life that you really want. So if you want to create some sort of success in your life, whether that's relationships or in your career or or your family or anything, you have to believe that you're someone who deserves those things. Otherwise, it's going to be impossible to make them happen. And what what would you say causes kind of low self-esteem? It's different from every for everyone. I think sometimes just messages that we take in from media, social media, mm-hmm. comparing ourselves to other people. That's a big one, comparing ourselves to yes. other people and finding the ways where we fall short. Um, sometimes we can pick up negative messages in childhood, whether we were bullied or um, were in toxic family situations that maybe created a sense of not being valuable. There's all kinds of ways you can develop low self-esteem. Um, but really what it is, is just a negative belief system that you've created. And so that you're seeing the world through that negative filter. And the good thing about that is that if you can change your mind, if you can decide that those things aren't actually true and look at the world in, through a more positive light, you can start to build a healthy self-esteem. Well, yeah, you know, you've said that your mind goes looking for the proof of what you believe. Yes, that is absolutely true. So if you believe that you are unworthy for some reason, you're going to be looking for all the proof that that is true. And in doing that, you're going to attract more of those situations to you. So dating is a good example. If you don't believe that you deserve to be treated with respect or in a healthy relationship, you're going to attract you people that are going to show who are not going to treat you well because you believe that that's what you deserve. So and you're bringing it into your life. We're doing it all self subconsciously. Yes, it's all subconscious. Um, we're, I think we've said this on other shows. I don't think there's anyone who's like, I want to go out in the world and just date a total jerk. I don't <laughs> think that's happening, but yet it is happening because yes. they don't have the right <laughs> self-esteem to only choose situations that are healthy for them. And that's true in dating, in career, in any type of relationship. So it's important to have a healthy self-esteem because it really influences the decisions you make, the choices you make. Um, And if you want to have a positive life experience, you need to have a healthy self-esteem. Exactly. Dr. Joe Rubino, and he is a founder of the Center for Personal Reinvention. He's the creator of the Self-Esteem System, and he's just an all-around self-esteem expert and guru. He estimates that 85% of the world's population is affected by low self-esteem. So I'd like to get us into the 15%. Yes. I would like to be in the 15%. Me too, and all of my clients and listeners. So that's what we're (laughs) going to be talking about today. How do you get to be in that 15%? And I bet, I don't know, I don't have the research on this, but I bet that number, that 85% has gotten higher because of social media and because of comparing that's happening all of the time. Yeah. So... We're going to dive into that a little bit today. How do you stop comparing yourself to other people? How do you focus on what's positive for you so that you can have a good health, healthy self-esteem and confidence? What? Well, let me ask you this. 
what are the dangers of having a low self-esteem? That you're going to attract negative situations to you. So if you have a low self-esteem at work, it's going to be hard to be promoted, to have good boundaries because you're probably going to just, you know, you know, I know you used to work for a corporation where you felt like <laughs> a large online retailer based here in Seattle. Yes. yes. And you, uh, you felt like you didn't have good boundaries there. And what was the negative impact of that to you? It was horrific. I mean, there was a lot of crying in the bathrooms outside, a um, lot of happy hours, that, ex- and they were happy hours, <laughs> not so happy hours, Yeah. Um, and just, just feeling kind of worthless, and going in every day and nothing ever being good enough, and being told every day, oh, this is not good enough, not good enough, there's no appreciation. It's a very, it was a very toxic environment, and I started to believe it. Right. I had always been a person who... Um, got a lot of my self-worth from my job, which shouldn't have been that way, but that's the way it was. And I'd always done very well and I felt very successful in my career. And then to go there and have that feeling like I was not, I wasn't good enough anymore. It was, it was really devastating. So not having a healthy self-esteem can definitely lead to crying in the bathroom at work. We don't (laughs) want to have that. (laughs) So what do you think if you had had at that point in time, um, a really like healthy self-esteem and self-confidence. How do you think that experience at that online retailer might have been different for you? I wouldn't have stayed for, I wouldn't have served eight years. Yes, working overtime and on holidays. Exactly, and And on weekends and everything. I wouldn't, I would have looked at this and said, this isn't for me. I am, I deserve better than this. Right. I don't, I don't deserve to be treated like this. I don't deserve to be giving up my entire life for this company. Right. But I didn't have those boundaries. I let it infiltrate every aspect of my life. So that's an example of how how low self-esteem can be dangerous is that it can really impact the experience that you're having in your career. Um, Same with relationships. I think that if you don't believe that you are valuable and worthy of love and respect, you can attract some really negative things into your relationship experience, being with people who um, take advantage of you or just don't treat you the way that you want to be treated. Yeah. And people who have really healthy self-esteem just won't allow for that because it doesn't yeah. line up with how they feel about themselves. So that type of person is not interesting to them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. It is really interesting how that shift happens. Mm-hmm. Cause I think back, I would never go back to work at that place. I would never even be interested in working in that kind of job ever again. Because I don't feel that way anymore. I don't feel like I deserve that anymore. Yes. And so you yeah. wouldn't tolerate it because it doesn't line up with how exactly. you feel. Exactly. There is a, um, a motivational speaker, I guess you could call him. Well, his name is Matt Kahn. Can yeah, you tell us a, about Matt Kahn? So he's a spiritual teacher, uh, motivational speaker, self-help, all kinds of great things. I'm a huge Matt Kahn fan. He's from the Seattle area. And we actually got the opportunity to see him, was that a year ago? A couple years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. Um, and he, if you want to look for a resource of somebody who can teach you about how to start to develop a healthy self-esteem and how to really love and accept who you are, which a lot of self-esteem comes from is accepting who you are and being okay with that. Uh, he is a fantastic resource. Um, but we both had a really good experience in his seminar. Um, I know for myself, one of the things I really appreciate about his work and what he has to say is to not judge where you're at. So if you're in a place where you're feeling bad about yourself or any type of negative emotion, self-doubt, whatever it is, anger, that instead of rejecting that and and layering on another layer of sh- shame and criticism, that you can just accept where you are and say, hey, I mean, this is where I'm at right now. I'm doubting myself and that's yes. okay. Yeah, he had said to turn to it, really, when you notice it's creeping up and say, oh, hello, self-loathing. Thank you for showing up. Yeah. And that was really, I think, eye-opening for both of us. Mm-hmm. And I, I really kind of practiced that, at least for the next several months. Like, oh, there's, there's doubt again. Well, thank you for showing up, doubt. And now you can leave. Yes. And, and what's, your, what's your message to me? But not instead of going like, oh, God, I suck. I don't, I'm, I'm the person that doubts myself. Just being in a place of acceptance of wherever you are. Yes. And that is a great way to build self-esteem because if we're saying where we're at right now is wrong or who we are is wrong, it's hard to have positive feelings about ourselves. Yes. And that's one of the things you also said, that having a good self-esteem is not necessarily being positive all the time and running around like Pollyanna. 
which I don't know is possible for most of us. I know I don't feel positive all the time. I try to feel positive a lot of the time, but sometimes I do feel angry or sometimes I do feel jealous or doubting myself or whatever negative emotion. And to just be like, okay, well, that's what is happening with me right now. And that's okay because human beings have negative emotions and I'm a human being. Yes, exactly. So um, we are going to take a quick break. Um, can you remind everybody of how they can get in touch with you? Yes. So at Seattle Healing Hypnosis, we offer a complimentary consultation. So you can call us anytime to schedule that at 206-765-8265. You can also find us online at seattlehealinghypnosis.com. And if you just want to catch up on the past episodes of On The Verge Radio, you can find us at onthevergeradio.com. Exactly. And I do love that you do the 30-minute consultation. You can do that over the phone, via Skype or Zoom. They can come into the office in Queen Anne. Yep. Yes. And just 30 minutes to talk about you, and we might decide we want to work together. And if not, you'll leave with some fabulous resources that will help you on your way. Absolutely. Okay, great, Laura. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking about self-acceptance. So stay tuned for more On The Verge Radio here on Transformation Talk Radio. Back. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to On The Verge Radio. I'm your host, Laura Richer, and I'm also the owner of Seattle Healing Hypnotherapy, Reiki, and Life Coaching. And I am here with my fabulous co-host, Andy Lucas, who is the owner of Hummingbird Marketing Services. Hello. And we are broadcasting on Transformation Talk Radio. And today, we're talking about loving thyself and building a healthy self-esteem. A big part of that is self-acceptance and being okay with who you are. Yeah, absolutely. And Laura, in your practice, I know that you've worked with clients who are introverts Mm -hmm. and they're hoping to be cured of this so-called ailment. And I wonder if you could talk about that because I think one of the the first things is accepting that you're not too much or not not enough. And some of that is being extrovert and introvert. So... Yes. And so part of self-acceptance is we can admire different traits in different people. Um, but if we start to think that we need to be those things and those aren't natural to us, then that can be a huge source of suffering. So um, often extroverted traits are, are really valued in, in our, especially in American culture. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I will have clients who have more introverted personality styles that will come to see me and think that somehow... I should be able, that they want to be hypnotized, which doesn't work, by the way, to change their personality. (laughs) (laughs) And hypnosis is an awesome therapy therapy tool, but it's not going to cause you to have a different personality. Um, And I very much understand. And thank goodness. Yes. Yeah. You don't want somebody changing your personality. Um, You want to just learn how to love the personality you have. So I very much understand this feeling. I have an introverted personality when I was young, especially. I always thought that that was a challenge for me to overcome, to learn how to be able to be more in front of people and more social. And it was not something that came very natural to me. Um, And so then at some point in my life, I took the Myers-Briggs test, which is a personality test that's Mm -hmm. been around forever. Um, And my personality type came back as an INFP. And it was like, oh, okay, there isn't anything wrong with me. It's just that this is my style of relating to the world. And it was so accurate. It just made so much sense to me. And it brought me a great sense of peace. It was something that was a tool that really helped me just accept that my personality, I hate making small talk with people. I'd rather you sit down and tell me your childhood trauma than have to talk about the weather. (laughs) And that's just kind of who I am. And that's not going to be any different. So I need to learn how to work with that and embrace the things that are good about me. Yes. Embrace the things that I need a little more help with, and and all of it is okay. I don't need to be different. Yeah. So that when I work with clients, that comes up quite a bit. Is that you know just because you have a more introverted personality doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It's just right. you know you may not be suited to be in sales, or you know you you might a be more comedian or a stand up comedian. Yes. You might be more suited to to be a therapist or a teacher of some kind. So yes. I think just any tool that helps you embrace who you are and better understand who you are yeah. is really important. And I know that you've experienced the opposite side of the introverted personality type. Yes. So I am more of an extrovert, mm-hmm. although I've learned some things about that that I'll get to in a second. But I kind of grew up feeling always like I was a little too much. Mm-hmm. And I know that I, I am a little too much. I did cartwheels down the hallway in, in high school and whatever. I, a little bit wanting to be the center Who decides of if it's too much or not, though? Oh, ex- well, I was, I was always worried about that. Yeah. And I think when I first started dating, I said to you, well, men don't like funny women. Yeah, you and tone I just it had down. The, yeah, I had to tone everything down yeah. and don't highlight that, any of that. And I was really afraid of being who I was. And you really helped me kind of accept, no, this is who I am. And if somebody doesn't like that, 
then I, they're not the right person they're not for your me. people yeah exactly and I took the Myers Briggs and that was a really interesting time for me because I'm an ENFP so we're like very similar but yeah. that introverted extroverted yes I don't think people that meet us think we have the same type of personality. No, <laughs> no, exactly. And the the thing that has come up for me too is that I found out I'm this new thing they're calling an either an introverted extrovert or an ambivert mm-hmm. because I like going out and being social and being the center of attention and all that. And then I need serious downtime yeah. to get away from it. So... So, and that's a good thing to understand about yourself too, that it's okay to do what you need to do for yourself and accept that that's just who you are. Yeah. So there are other tools to kind of understand and embrace your personality. Can you share like some of those? There's all kinds of tools and whatever resonates with you is a good tool to use. So I love Myers-Briggs. There's a website called 16personalities.com where you can take a quick 10-minute quiz that'll give you a really cool personality Mm -hmm. analysis for free. Um, I'm also a huge fan of astrology. So if that, and that's a great tool for understanding who you are and... What is your sign? um, So my sun sign is a Pisces. I do have a lot of Pisces traits of being emotional. I think I, when I was a child, I was very sensitive. <laughs> we could talk about that. I got my feelings hurt very easily. That's very Pisces. Um, I also love things that are mystical and, mm-hmm. you know, all the, the subconscious. Pisces rules that. So uh, that was another tool that kind of gave me some framework to understand my personality. Yes. And it doesn't have to be, if you don't like, if astrology isn't your deal, there's Enneagrams, there's the the colors personality test, yes. there's some more like corporate business formatted type things. You could take BuzzFeed quizzes and find out what junk food you are. Exactly. But I do love astrology. So what is your sign? Uh, my sun sign is an Aries. Okay. Um, and my rising sign is Taurus. Mm-hmm. And my my moon sign is a Leo. So I'm really like the worst combination out there. <laughs> Very domineering. <laughs> stubborn. Fiery. Yeah, stubborn. Fiery. Yes. But it's not about being the worst. It's just accepting yeah. your traits and what, what's good about that. And yeah. so there's some things to work with too. Yeah. And I think that has really helped too is understanding not only who I am, but then the type of person that would be well suited for me. Yeah. Because there's not just... Or the type of job. Exactly. And a former job that I had, not at the large online retailer, Mm -hmm. but another one, they had us do this thing called insights discovery. And that is kind of the color test. Mm -hmm. But they put it in the framework of our job so we could see who, how we needed to treat other people that were certain colors so that we, it it just, it helped our teamwork and it helped, you know, us work together. It was really interesting. And it is so helpful just to have that understanding. I know for me, I started my career in sales, which as an introvert, I was very mediocre at that. And then (laughs) I moved on to uh, claims management, um, which is very detail-oriented. And also my personality type uh, lends itself well to like seeing more big picture ideas and not so analysis detail-oriented. So that was really a struggle for me. And so, you know, I kept landing kind of in the wrong place and feeling inadequate because I wasn't measuring up, but it was just, I wasn't in situations that were really using my skill set. Yeah. Turns out, uh, according to Myers-Briggs, I'm very suited to be a therapist. So Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How'd they know? Do you know what I was suited for what? on mine? A magazine editor, well, which was and, my whole background. So. Yes. And now what you do in, in your marketing services and editing yes. and content writing all and of all of it. It, so, all, it all works. Yeah. And you can find a way. So in my business, I do have a need to manage details, but I hire Hummingbird Marketing <laughs> Services for that because I'm not good at it. Yeah. And we yeah. just fly right in and flutter <laughs> away and take care of it. So can we talk about some of the common like personality differences that I think people are afraid to accept themselves. So we've talked about introverts and extroverts. Yes. And then there's this other issue of being maybe a little more sensitive Mm -hmm. and then being thick-skinned. So I think that being sensitive is really considered in um, sometimes we're as children or in business that we're taught that being sensitive is a bad thing, that Uh you need to develop a thick skin And there are really a lot of great, and especially for men, I think that that has been more of a challenge. Boys don't cry, that whole kind of thought process. And being sensitive is, you know, you're sensing what's going on with other people. So while you might be more of an emotional person if you're sensitive, you're also, you have a really great skill of being intuitive, of knowing how to read other people, um, and, and maybe seeing the big picture of a situation. So sensitive can be really good. Yes. It's not a bad thing. Um, but sometimes people are taught that you don't want to be sensitive. You need to be tough and have a thick skin. And that, that has happened to me, and it took me a long time to accept myself mm-hmm. um, because I tend to cry. 
it's just, it's right on the surface. And when I get, um, when I'm mad or I feel threatened or whatever, I, it just comes out that way. It just, I cry. Yeah. And then a lot of people, like people I've dated and stuff in front, oh God, she's crying again. Like it was some kind of weakness or it was a bad thing. Right. And it took me a really long time. And only in the past couple of years have I realized it's not a bad thing. It's just how you process. Am. It's how I process my emotions. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of people like that. Or it's just a little more sensitive. Yeah. I also think of myself as a pretty sensitive person. I don't know that I've ever been described as super thick skinned. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Oh, here it, comes thick skinned yeah, Laura. Yeah. No. But in knowing that and accepting about that my, about myself, I can also choose situations and relationships that are going to be suited for that. Yes. So me and my boyfriend have, Travis, have joked before, you know, that we're both very sensitive to criticism, like maybe on more of the extreme level than we need to be. But because we're both like that, we get along very well because we dole out criticism very lightly. Very lightly and we, are quick to yeah. rush it over. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, God, I'm sorry I said that. I yeah. really didn't mean no, it. No, no, it's no, okay. I'm no. the one who's sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, somebody who's super direct is maybe not a good match for me, and that doesn't make them wrong either. But, or you. Yeah. 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 It just doesn't, it's not necessarily what works. Right. And more, and on the flip side, for people who are more direct and maybe aren't quite as sensitive and aren't noticing those subtleties and just kind of want to get to the point, which mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that either, they will be better suited in, in career environments and relationships where that is more acceptable. Yes. You know, Johnny Depp mm-hmm. says, I think everybody's weird. We should all celebrate our individuality and not be embarrassed or ashamed of I it. I agree. That's, uh, that's... Absolutely true. Some We'd of the all few be a wise words from Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that I think is really interesting, Rita Mae Brown, so she's an author and an activist, and she says the reward for conformity is that everyone likes you but yourself. Yeah, I think that that's true. So even though we might see the traits that other people have, being an extrovert, for example, if I... My friends are a lot of my friends are very extroverted. My boyfriend is extroverted, and I really am drawn to extroverted people. I appreciate that quality in other people. But if I'm pushing myself to be that, I'm going to be uncomfortable all the time because yeah. what I'm saying to myself is there's something wrong with the way that I am, and I'm forcing myself into something that isn't natural or authentic to me. Exactly. Yeah. And what a what an uncomfortable life, right? And how miserable and have to not even be able to relax and be yourself. It takes so much energy then to try to be this other person that you're yeah it's yeah a little stressful yeah and and then you know again you're just saying to yourself there's something wrong with the way that you are and that's sending yourself a negative message and eating away at your self-esteem yes oh my goodness yeah okay (laughs) so we're going to take a quick break uh when we come back we're going to be giving you the seven steps to a seven figure self-worth so stay tuned for more On The Verge Radio here on Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome back, Bravery. Um, we are on On The Verge Radio broadcasting on Transformation Talk Radio. I'm joined by host Laura Richer. Hi, Andy. Hi, Laura. And who am I? I'm Laura's co-host, Andy Lucas. And today we're talking about healthy self-esteem. Uh, we've talked a lot about what self-esteem is, why it's important, why... Um, and you know, where it comes from. But now we want to get into the how. Yes. And how do you kind of start loving yourself? And how do we build this seven-figure self-worth? So I work with a lot of clients who come to me because they want to work on their confidence and self-esteem and loving themselves. And as simple as it is, although difficult, I have a lot of people say, well, I don't even know what that means. How do I do what, How do I do that? What are the action steps? So yeah. we have come up with a list to give some people some practical advice of how to start building a seven-figure self-worth. And we do have this on the website. Yes. If you go to ontheverdradio.com, you'll just see it right there. It's how to build a seven-figure self-worth. You'll see cash money, and you can read all these (laughs) tips if you're not able to listen the whole way through. And, of course, we always have archives of the show on ontheverdradio.com as well. So kick it off. What is step number one? Okay, so number one is just focus on what makes you fantastic. You're awesome just because you are. So that is what we were talking about in the last segment is – just accepting yourself and focusing on what is really fantastic about you. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if you have certain personality traits that you want to work on or fix, that's fine. But don't focus all of your attention there. Focus on the things that you're already doing that are great. And what's a good way to kind of start doing that? 
I just make a list, make a list. And this is harder for people when I'll say, okay, tell me the best 10 things about you. Sometimes people can't even get past three. So sometimes we don't even realize that we've been so focused on the negative that we've lost all sight of the good things that are happening. And there's always a lot of, there's always both. There's negative and positive things happening, but sometimes the negative feels bigger because there's so much attention put on that. Right. So when you start to actively you know, make a list of the things you're already doing great, which I'm sure for all of us, there's at least a handful. You can start to focus your attention on those things. What about the people who say, oh, this feels really, I I feel like I'm being boastful when I write this stuff down. Good. Just do it anyway. (laughs) Brag about yourself. (laughs) Just brag, shamelessly brag about yourself, especially if you're just doing the list by yourself. Because you want to shift your energy. If you're always focused on negative stuff, you're going to just be feeling yucky. You can yes. feel it in your body. If you've got this, you know, all of these negative, I, I'm not enough. I should have done this. I should have done that. It just feels bad. So start focusing on some of the, I'm a really good friend. I, you know, I rescue animals. I yeah. am a really good cook. Whatever it is to start focusing on what's great about you. Because you're not sharing this list with anyone else. It's or you for can you. if you want. You can. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, here, put it on your Tinder profile. Yeah. <laughs> these are the 10 great things about me. This is what's me. great about me. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a quote that kind of goes along with this. It's Dr. Dennis Waitley. He is the author of The Psychology of Winning. And he says, to establish true self-esteem, we must concentrate on our successes and forget about the failures and the negatives in our lives. Right. Yeah. Because what you're focusing on is the experience that you're having. So if, you know, I want to focus on the positive things that are happening, I'm going to have a more positive experience. Mm -hmm. If I'm focusing on things that didn't work out in the past and really fixating there, that is what I'm going to be feeling. Yes. I just had an aha moment. Oh. So thank you. Oh. I'm currently in the process of selling my house. Yes. And I'm just a nervous wreck about it. It's causing all this stress. And I'm focusing on what if it doesn't sell? What if it doesn't sell? And all of this. And I really need to You're be You're kidding focusing. me right about now? Do you know we're in the hottest market right now? I know. <laughs> what I know are what you I'm... worried about? Are you kidding me? We're up 15% Benny. of this market alone. 26 in Gray Harbor. There's Benny, the voice of reason, yes. coming Jeez, through. Oh, I've How also should got... you be stressed? You'd be like, no, no problem. I'm super stressed, and so I keep focusing on that. What if it doesn't sell? What if it doesn't sell? And instead, I should focus on... It's going to sell. It's selling. Yeah, and and part of that is because, I mean, and I believe, as Benny said, we're in a very hot real estate market here in Seattle. It's going to sell. But in the meantime, you are living in the experience of, I'm not going to sell my house. You're living life as if the house hasn't sold when that isn't the truth of what's going to happen. happen. Yeah, but you are having this negative experience even though the the house could sell tomorrow. It will. It will sell, sell tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Fantastic. Yes. Oh, this is all good. Look at the advice I'm getting from yes. their own show. Yeah. So do that same thing. If you're constantly fixated on, you know, I'm not successful enough. I'm not successful enough. I didn't go to college. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Then you're having the experience of not being successful. Yeah. And it's all, it's it's a mindset. You're kind of ruminating in it. Yeah. Ugh. So okay. whether, and you could be really successful. It's interesting to me sometimes when I work with clients and I have, have clients who are really worried about their finances and not having enough money. Uh, And then they tell me kind of, you know, how much money they have. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot more money than I have. (laughs) Um, And so, but they are, but they are having the experience of not having enough money because that's what they believe. So it doesn't really matter what the the amount is, the number in the bank is. It's it's the beliefs that you have built around it. And so that's the same thing about with self-esteem and who you are. Yes. So focus on the positive. Yes. What about numbers two? Step number two to a seven-figure self-worth is... Monitor your inner dialogue. So what are you thinking about? And notice whether those are positive thoughts or negative thoughts. Yes. And I don't think that we can tell ourselves things that we don't believe. So if you're having the thought that like, oh, I'm fat, you can't, you can't just switch into I've got the hottest body ever because that's your mind isn't going to believe that. But can you move away from that to, you know, oh, I'm, I'm starting to exercise and my, I'm starting to feel healthier and focus your attention there or... Um, you know, or I'm not successful enough, you know, you're not going to convince yourself that you're the CEO of a major corporation when that's not true, but you can say, but I did the great on this project at work, or I have had these successes in the past. And just notice where you're focused, again, where you're focusing your attention and what you're telling yourself about who you are. Yeah. Louise Hay, who we Mm -hmm. both love and read all about, Mm -hmm. uh, she says, you've been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. Yes. It's true. Yeah. This kind of, this is a brilliant tie-in to number one is really focusing on the positive and that, that negative self-talk can be really And I see brutal. this with people that I work with all the time. 
and I've had this experience myself too. I mean, if, if beating the crap out of yourself was going to cause you to change, you would have already done it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, true. So that isn't, that isn't working. If shaming yourself and thinking negative things is, would impact change, all of us would have already made all the changes that we wanted to make. That's true. Yeah. Is it counterproductive? Yes, because what we, like what we talked about before in that your mind is looking for proof of what you believe. If you believe I'm a loser and I can't accomplish anything, you just will get stuck there because your mind is always looking for proof that that's true in situations where that's, that, where that's true. So you just kind of attract more of that to you. Yes. Wow. Okay. Um, number three, the step number three is stay away from energy vampires. Yes. And so this came to me because I just read a really <laughs> awesome book by Dr. Uh, Christiane Northrup, which is called Dodging Energy Vampires. Ooh. What and is an energy vampire? An energy vampire is just somebody who kind of sucks the life out of you. We've all been uh, around people who are maybe really negative or there's no reciprocity uh, in the really? relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Eeyore. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. Those people. Yes, those people. Did you get Eeyores. me now? I got right. it. Nothing, nothing <laughs> is ever going right. Everything is negative. They can always take a positive thing and turn it into a negative. Debbie Downer. Debbie Downers. Or also really dramatic people who always want to have the attention focused on them and don't give, they kind of suck the air out of, a room, out of the room. <laughs> Andy's looking at me like, okay, what you got for that one? Yeah. Oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so those so people people who make you feel bad that yeah. is not good for your self esteem. Being around no. people who are really critical of you, maybe a lot of backhanded compliments, maybe mm-hmm. directly critical. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we can't get away from those people. Sometimes those people are our family members, or our boss, our kids, <laughs> our parents. But so what do you do in that case if you, you can't get away? You need to have limits and boundaries with people who are highly critical of you. Because if you're exposing yourself to it and taking it in all the time, it's it's going to be tough. Unless you're one of those really thick skin people who can <laughs> just let it roll off their back, which not a lot of people are, I don't think. Um, then you're, it's going to have a negative impact. So you just want to limit your exposure to that yeah. as much as you possibly can. It's probably impossible to to totally cut that out. But yeah, I had a massage therapist once tell me because I was, you know, face down. She's helping me out. And I was complaining about something that was going to go on. And she said, what you need to do is put up mirrors that are facing outward. So just bounce it all back off of them. Yeah. Or turn it in and face it toward yourself and just keep all of your positive energy to yourself. I love that. And as a closing quote for these energy vampires, I love this from Hans Hansen, who's a professional soccer player and entrepreneur. People inspire you or drain you. Pick them wisely. Yes. And I think sometimes we feel obligated to be with the people that drain us, but, you know, it is a choice. It's Everything's always yes. a choice. Yeah. Okay. Step number four to a seven-figure self-worth is when someone has something nice to say to you, just thank them. So well, there's a novel concept. <laughs> I think for humor and connecting with other people, sometimes we can be really self-deprecating, which is fine because that can be funny sometimes. But if you are feeling low on self-worth and self-esteem, you might want to stay away from that for a little bit because you're not really acknowledging your positive traits. So if I'm like, Andy, you look so great. That shirt looks great on you. are like, well. Oh, I got it on clearance. I got it on clearance. It doesn't fit. And actually, I've gained a few pounds since the last time you saw me. You know, yeah. that doesn't feel good. <laughs> no. And it makes it also makes the complimenter. Yeah, feel weird. Like, oh, why did I even say that? Right. Yes. Yeah. Because then you're either forced to kind of try to convince them or be like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I guess it is crap. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, and it doesn't feel good to, to not acknowledge when we've done something good. So, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's, or, oh, this is a great meal. Well, I got it. Part of it's out of a box. You know, just We're, say thank you. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> um, a friend of mine, and it's a coworker of Zach, uh, my boyfriend's, says when you get a compliment to just say, well, thank you for noticing. Yes. And then and take it in. Yes. Take in that appreciation. And it might change your mind. You might start to notice that you go, yeah, I am a good cook. Oh, this shirt does look good. And you start to feel better. Yes, exactly. And you start believing it. And then it goes back to number one, where you're focusing on what makes you fantastic. Yes, exactly. Um, Mark Twain always said, I can live for two months on a good compliment. It does feel good to get a good compliment. You almost feel like you have a seven-figure self-worth. Exactly. Like a million bucks. (laughs) So, uh, step five, and I do want to say this really quickly. We should mention that in your practice, Mm -hmm. you offer a self-esteem boost. I do. a program. Can you tell us about that? Yes, and I have a a program that is an eight-week program where I work with 
uh, clients specifically on increasing confidence and self-esteem to help them create whatever it is that they're trying to create in their life. Like that is the foundation for whatever you want to do is you need to have a healthy self-esteem and a belief in yourself that you can do it. And what is involved in the program? So we work together over an eight-week period. We meet in the office for a session of any of the modalities that I use with my clients, which are Reiki, hypnotherapy, and coaching. Um, We're also in close contact during that time with via email if they have questions or aha moments or if we need to schedule an emergency phone call or if I can forward them some reading or YouTube videos or things that will help support them in whatever they're doing, we do yeah. that. So it's very custom. It's specific to whatever my that client is trying to accomplish. It's different, yeah. a different program for every client, but it's custom tailored to them to help them feel really good by the time we're done working together in eight That's weeks. That's fantastic. Yeah. And remind everybody the phone number to call if they're interested in learning more about this. They can call us at 206-765-8265 and they will reach Larry who can schedule a complimentary consultation with me. Larry um, the scheduler. Yes, so that I can help teach you how to build a seven-figure self-worth. Um, and you can also reach us online at Seattle Healing Hypnosis. We're all over social media. And you can also go to ontheverdradio.com and listen to past episodes. So we're everywhere. We're everywhere. Yeah. You can't hide. <laughs> yeah. Okay? <laughs> so continuing this conversation about a seven-figure self-worth, what is step number five? So this is similar to uh, number two, which was monitor your inner dialogue. But five, stop listening to your crazy inner bitch. So who are you calling crazy? <laughs> we all have a... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, she just came out. Yeah. <laughs> we all have so a So dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all have this crazy voice in our mind that is saying negative things to mm-hmm. us. I think that the difference between someone who has positive self-esteem and someone who has negative self-esteem is how much you're listening to it, believing it, and paying attention to it. So there is just this ruthless, crazy bitch in my mind that can tell me something negative at any time that I'm not enough. I did something wrong. Am I whatever it is? Um, And if I believe those thoughts, if I really listen to her, that is the experience that I'm going to have is the experience of not being enough for whatever reason. If I can monitor those thoughts and go, oh, that's interesting. That's that part of me that wants to tell me. I should be thinner, but I'm not going to listen to that today. Yeah. I'm going to have a very different experience. But those, the interesting thing about those thoughts is they're not real. If you observe them and become aware of them, you start to notice that, that they're insane, really. I mean, do you have a crazy inner bitch that says Absolutely. crazy things to you? Absolutely. Oh, and she says some really mean things to me. She's she says so things mean. to me that I wouldn't say to my worst enemies. No. Yeah. Where does, where does this voice come from? And we all have it. We have, all, I mean, I think we just all have a part of the brain, the ego part of our mind that either tells us, that wants to destroy us, basically, that will tell us what, it'll sometimes tell us that we're superior to other people, but it'll also tell us that we're inferior. Mine is usually saying that I'm inferior, <laughs> um, but I can just observe that thought, you know, and sometimes I tell clients, I've had all kinds of crazy thoughts, like I'll be driving in the car as the passenger and think, oh, I could open the door right now, and we're going 85 on the freeway. But I don't believe that thought. I don't right. act on it because I know it's not real. And where does it come from or why does it show up? I'm not really sure. But that one just floats in and out of my mind. That's not a real thought. But I could have the thought that, you know, my I should be something different than I am. I should be more successful. I should be thinner, mm-hmm. whatever. And if I believe in that thought, that really is the experience I'm going to be having, which is a, a negative experience. How do we... How do we tune her out? Is it just practice? Just practice. I mean, sometimes you can go into a story um, in your mind and you you fully engage in it and it's the truth of what's happening in that moment. But if you take but every now and then if you're practicing awareness, you can take a little step back and go, "Oh, there's that story again. That story of me not being enough. Well, it's showing or I'm not going to sell my house or I'm not going <laughs> to have enough money and I'm going to be homeless or whatever the yes. story is." And you can just get a little space between you and that thought and go, there it is. That's, it's not even really happening. That's not a real thing right now. Right. But I'm having the experience of it being real because I've fully invested in it. So it's awareness mm-hmm. and then really looking at it and saying, this isn't true. Yeah. I'd, or, and choosing not to believe it. Just choosing not to, like, I'm not going to invest in that thought today. But we are very programmed to automatically go to those thoughts. And so it mm-hmm. is a practice of being more aware. And it's It's a practice. You can't do it all the time. I still catch myself going into crazy stories sometimes, and it will take a (laughs) while to pull myself back into reality. (laughs) Absolutely. Like, oh, I just made all of that up. None of that's even real. (laughs) 
Uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson says, most of the shadows in this life are caused by standing in one's own sunshine. Yes. So we're doing it all to ourselves. Yeah. And it's not, a lot of it is not even really happening. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. But isn't that cool that we have the power to just shift out of that by changing the way that we think? Yes, it is. And it's good to know that nobody's going to be perfect. No. It's going to slip back into it. It's it's a constant, I wouldn't say work, it's just constant awareness, constant practice. Yeah. Yeah. And the more you practice it, the more it becomes your second nature not to do it as often. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Number six in the steps to building a seven-figure self-worth. Practice radical self-care because you deserve it. So to have good self-esteem, you have to be willing to take care of yourself. And that means maybe eating good, exercising. You don't have to be crazy. You don't have to be on a crazy strict diet or exercising three hours a day. But you have to be doing things to take care of your physical body. If your physical body doesn't feel good, it's hard to have good self-esteem. So just basic things to take care of yourself. Quit smoking. Quit smoking. Don't drink as much. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, And then on top of that part, taking care of your physical body, is doing things that kind of nurture your your soul, taking care, Mm -hmm. having fun, enjoying your life, Um, Mm -hmm. taking a moment to smell the flowers, just really taking care of you. I had an experience the other day where I was going for a, a walk with my dog, and it was a really beautiful day out, and I was walking with him, and I was noticing like ev- the flowers and everything were in bloom in the neighborhood and it was really pretty. And I thought, oh my God, I have all this to do at work and I have to start applying for internships. And I, I have just went into this story about not being enough and not getting enough done. Yeah. And I was able to pull myself out of it and go, this moment of just walking in the sunshine with my dog is just as important to my well-being as the other things that need to get done. Yes. So it's okay to just be in those moments and enjoy those Why moments. Is it, I find it can be difficult for me, and I don't think I'm alone in this, Mm -hmm. why is it difficult for us to take care of ourselves? Because we think that we need, I don't know, It's. I think it depends on the person. Some people are better at it than other people, but a lot of people aren't good at it. And I think it's because we feel like we need to be giving to something else all the time and that we, if we don't have good self-esteem, we don't feel worth our attention. Maybe our job needs it more, our family needs it more, and we're we're prioritizing ourselves last. And so it's hard to, to make those changes because you only have so much energy. Right. And some of it needs to be directed to you. I have mm-hmm. a client I've been working with who wants to quit smoking, but her life is really um, out of balance and she's working quite a bit. And so, you know, at some point you have to decide, you know, where am I going to invest my energy? Because if I'm giving all of it to work, it's going to be really hard to make any changes to take care yeah, of myself. Yeah, because you're depleted. Yeah. And I definitely okay. felt that when I had a corporate job, it was very difficult to want to take care of myself. I just wanted to come home and zone out with TV or a glass of wine or something. It yeah. was hard to find that motivation because I was out of balance. Okay. Interesting. Well, Jillian Michaels, who is a fitness guru, fitness queen, mm-hmm. says something that resonates with me that selfish isn't a dirty word. It means we take care of ourselves mm-hmm. so that we're able to give back. Yes. Why? We've talked about this before, but for some reason, selfish is it does sound, it has this negative connotation. Well, selfish, I mean, I think when you hear the word selfish, it sounds like you're taking at the expense of somebody else, and that Mm -hmm. isn't good. Um, But you do need to take care of yourself. So you don't need to be a totally narcissistic and just run over everyone that comes into your path, crosses your path. But at the same time, you don't need to self-sacrifice and not take care of you. So taking care of you is not selfish. It's your job. If you're not going to do it, no one is going to do it. What? (laughs) Yeah, that's very true. And you're no good to anyone else when you're not taking care of yourself. If I'm totally depleted and exhausted, you know, I don't really have very much to offer. Right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Fantastic. Okay. So the last one, this Mm -hmm. is step number seven for a seven figure self. That's a lot of seven. Yeah. um, Is... Transform your boundaries. And so on our last ap- episode, if you didn't see it, check it out. We had our favorite boundaries expert, Sari Gilman, on talking oh. about how to have good boundaries in your life. And that is so important to having good self-esteem um, because you cannot create the results that you want for yourself if you are not trusting your own inner yes and inner no. If you're doing things that you don't want to be doing all the time, but you feel guilty, and so you're doing them for other people, mm. you are not building self-confidence. It just doesn't it's work. It's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. Okay. So 
Um, I think that boundaries are really hard for people because we don't want to let other people down. But when we don't respect our own boundaries, we're letting ourselves down. And which is which is worse? Well, I think ultimately, if you're letting yourself down all the time, you don't have a lot to offer. Exactly. Yeah. And you've also said that when you do things for people, it should come from a place of kindness and a place of wanting. And yeah. that if you're doing it and not wanting to, that that's not really very kind. I don't think so. I don't want somebody to do something for me that behind my back they're going like, oh God, she's so terrible. I can't believe she asked me that. And then showing up with a smile on their face. I mean, that would make me feel really bad. I don't want anyone yes, to do that. Exactly. You so, want them to do it because they want to do this. Exactly. And if they don't, I want them to tell me. So I don't want to I don't want to cross their boundaries and make them feel uncomfortable and push them to do things that they don't want to do. Right. But I do need someone to tell if it's something they don't want to do and I don't know, I need them to tell me that. Yes. Is it why is it hard for people to say no? We don't want to let other people down. We feel obligated. Um, we don't want to look bad. We feel like if we were a nicer person, we would want to do something. <laughs> and that goes back to really accepting who you are. Yes. You know, and there's things that, you know, that might nice people might do, but you might not be wanting to do them. And that doesn't mean I'm not a nice person. Well, it might mean you're not, not a nice person, but... <laughs> It's who you are. Hey, you, now. Ha- you have to accept it. No, no, it doesn't mean you're not. It just means that it's it's not something that is for you. Right, like helping someone move. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And I just want to share this quote from Kim McMillan. She's a politician and she's an author of a book called When I Loved Myself Enough or When I Love Myself Enough. When I loved myself enough, I began leaving whatever wasn't healthy. Mm-hmm. This meant people, jobs, my own beliefs and habits, anything that kept me small. My judgment called it disloyal. Now I see it as self-loving. I agree with Kim. That is an awesome quote. Yeah. So again, if you want to read over any of these tips for building, so you can build your own seven-figure self-worth, they're all on the website, onthevergeradio.com. Laura, we're almost out of time. Can you remind everyone of how they can get in touch with you? You can reach me at 206-765-8265 at Seattle Healing Hypnosis to schedule your complimentary 30-minute consultation. Yes. Or you can find us online at seattlehealinghypnosis.com or on theverdradio.com. Fantastic. And we always have uh, archives of the show that are you can watch and listen to them. They're on ontheverdradio.com. And we'd always love to hear questions and comments on the show. Um, we will be back next month. And we look forward to talking again soon. Have a great day. Thank you. You've been listening to On The Verge Radio, using your breakdown for a breakthrough with Coach Laura Richer. We all have that moment in life when we are on the verge of big change. This time of transition is a wild and unknown place. How will you show up? Embrace the positive, drop the negative, and you can experience total transformation. Schedule a breakthrough session with Laura at seattlehealinghypnosis.com. Laura will help you discover the path to creating rapid and positive changes. Tune in every month for On The Verge Radio with Laura Richer.